Former Bosasa CFO Andres Fantonde has detailed multiple sources where they used to source cash to pay bribes. Fantonde was giving evidence following Angelo Agrizi, who made damning re- revelations rather about the workings of Bosasa. Fantonde is the one who took the video that showed Gavin Watson, the CEO of Bosasa, handling large amounts of cash. The man responsible for the finances at Bosasa is continuing to give evidence at the Zono Commission. He's shed light on how cash was acquired to pay bribes to various people. Fantona has also detailed a meeting that he had with his former boss, Gavin Watson, and others about an SIU report which implicated Bosasa in wrongdoing regarding tenders in the Correctional Services Department. Meanwhile, Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo says those implicated in the testimony of former Bosasa CEO and Angelo Agrizi will be given excerpts from his affidavit in order to respond if need be and cross-examine him. Zondo says the commission will be dealing with all the complaints as to why advance warning was not given to those implicated. Now for more on the story, we'll cross to our senior political reporter Mzwandile Mbeche in Parktown. Good afternoon, Mzwandile. The former CFO making startling statements about bribes, houses being built and a prawn farm. Absolutely, Nzinga. Remember, this is someone really who was very central uh, in the acquiring of cash uh, because he was the CFO. So which means uh, the cash that they needed. And remember, there's a number of people that needed to be bribed. If you uh, remember very well the evidence of uh, Mr. Akritzi saying there were so many people that needed to be paid and needed to be paid in cash. And the question is, Nzinga, where did that cash come from? So what uh, Mr. Fantoner is saying is that uh, most of that money came from... um, Bosasa accounts, but how did they get that? Because you can't simply walk in and just get cash. So basically they were using multiple sources uh, to try and, and get that cash. I mean, one of those um, sources, basically, they're calling it... Um, so they would either be garages. Uh, I think they had an arrangement with the garage in Pumalanga. I think the, the, the Toyota garage. So where they would basically uh, put an order for petrol when, uh, when, when they know very well. So it absolutely had nothing to do with that. So they also had uh, the arrangements with uh, uh, liquor companies and various other companies where really they then would be able to get this cash and this cash would be transported into the vault of Mr. Watson. So that's where he would be able then to pay various individuals. I mean, we saw in that video, uh, which was actually taken by this uh, witness who's on the stand, uh, Mr. Van Donner, so packaging that uh, cash. And uh, yeah, basically, that's how they used to do all these things. And he was very important, given that he was the CFO. Zwandile, we also heard that he misrepresented the company's finances to SARS and they had advanced warnings when Bosasa was going to be raided. Absolutely, and Zenga, you know, this has been the story we've been listening to for the past two weeks. Uh, when Agrizi was here, that is the story he's been telling us. Most of the things that were being done uh, in this company, so they would create fake accounts, they would create uh, false in- invoices. I mean, knowing that they were doing all these illegal businesses, so somehow they had to try and uh, misrepresent certain things. Because, I mean, how do you account for cash and zinga? Uh, that just goes around, Um, you have to find a way, you have to misrepresent somehow, because then SARS will be able to pick up that there are things that are not going right. So as a result, I mean, him being the man who is accounting so far as monies are concerned, so he was really there to misrepresent in order to suit uh, that kind of narrative, or rather that kind of... um, Uh, the programs they were following at that time. So this was widespread. I think what he is basically uh, saying, Mr. Fantoner, is by and large corroborating what uh, uh, Mr. Agrizi has been saying. And then we understand that uh, his evidence is about to conclude. And then what he essentially really was uh, doing was that uh, most of the instances where he's telling us is that um, Gavin Watson is very, very central in everything that is happening at Bosasa. But guess what? In all of this, 
uh, Kevin Watson is not in some of these um, investigations because he doesn't sign anything. So that is why they also needed to be very careful. They needed to misrepresent things so that they couldn't get into trouble. Zwandiria, what's next at the state capture inquiry um, after the break and going forward? Um, once he concludes, uh, we expect uh, another witness uh, who probably would also take a stand this afternoon. And he also, in all likelihood, because remember, they are keeping this a very closely guarded secret. So they are not, not telling us who these witnesses uh, are. But we assume uh, those are some of the people who were the employees at Bosasa, those who decided to blow the whistle. I think that's why they are being protected. Once the Fantoner is uh, concluded with his evidence, we expect another member of the whistleblowers who we suspect will also be coming from uh, the Bosasa group also to share his story. And we also expect again that uh, most of what he will say will corroborate by and large what um, Mr. Agritz has been saying. Wandile Mbecha, senior political reporter, giving us an update on the state capture inquiry that's taking place today.